In this video, we're going to solve a problem that illustrates the differences between the internal energy and the enthalpy. In the last few videos, we have uh, laid out the groundwork for the definitions of enthalpy, internal energy, the first law, and so forth. All that work has been heavily theoretical with a lot of applications, so this is a good time to start to see how those concepts apply into actual useful chemical data. Okay, so we're going to take a look at, our, at a reaction, and we're going to do some measurements on that reaction, and then uh, we're going to try to determine what the change in enthalpy and the change in internal energy are for that reaction. The reaction is a simple one. It's just the, uh, the reaction of sodium metal with water, and that generates sodium hydroxide. Uh, in aqueous phase, and then bubbles of hydrogen. Okay, this is uh, a typical demo that is done uh, in general chemistry uh, courses. Okay, so the data is that we run this reaction isothermally. Okay, so the idea here is that this is gonna be, there's going to be a large bath of water, and you're going to be throwing a little bit of, of sodium metal into that large bath of water, so that the temperature doesn't change a lot dramatically during the reaction. As a matter of fact, we're going to be considering the temperature is constant at 25 Celsius, which to four significant figures happens to be 298.2 Kelvin. Uh, the other piece of information that we have right here is that the uh, reaction is going to be uh, two moles of uh, sodium. Okay, that's the, uh, the amount of sodium that you're throwing into this large bath of water. And the measurement uh, that, we're, that we're executing here to try to figure out what enthalpy and internal energy are is the amount of energy uh, released uh, as heat, okay, or transferred as heat. And that Q, which can be measured, happens to be minus 367.5 kilojoules. Okay? Uh, it's negative, that means that the reaction is exothermic. Okay, so, so energy is liberated in the reaction and it ends up in the surroundings and that can be measured uh, uh, by this number. Now, this reaction is run open to the atmosphere and that is a very important detail because if it's open to the atmosphere, that means that you're working under constant pressure conditions. So automatically, you know that your Q, sub, your Q is Q sub P and at the same time, you actually also know what delta H is, because delta H is equal to the amount of energy releases heat at constant pressure, then you know that uh, 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 right away. Okay, so that is kind of the first uh, uh, important uh, uh, finding in this reaction, and this problem, right, the, the change in, in enthalpy. It's a negative number, okay, that means that the process is exothermic. Right, so from here, we're gonna try to calculate the change in internal energy, delta U, and then uh, comparison to this delta H value that we just calculated will be again illuminating in trying to see what the similarities and differences are between enthalpy and internal energy. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to take the definition of uh, enthalpy because if we take here changes, right, we can calculate delta U from delta H. Okay, so let's see where we do that. I'm going to erase these numbers and then we will recover them uh, later on. Okay, so here is the definition of enthalpy. Delta H is equal to delta U plus delta PV. Okay, and we know what this number is, minus 367.5 kilojoules. Now our goal then is to calculate delta U and we can solve for it right away. And that is going to be delta H minus delta PV. Right, so then the only problem that we have here to calculate the value of delta U is simply find what this delta PV is. Okay, and uh, a way to see that is that this will be equal to uh, final pressure, final volume, minus initial pressure multiplied by initial volume. Right, so that would be one way to do it. But proceeding this way is exceedingly difficult. Okay, there's actually an easier way to go about this, which is what we're going to be using in the problems all the time, that is very useful. Notice that this um, uh, 
uh, term right here is the product of the pressure and the volume, the changes to that to that product. Okay, now it turns out that uh, when you think about liquids and solids, right, when you apply large amounts of pressure, the volume literally changes, right? So, so what that means is that this uh, uh, change in that delta PV term, or in that in that PV term, is actually very very small. As a matter of fact, it's neg negligible if there's a gas present. If there is a gas present, right, you can clearly see that for a gas, they're highly compressible, right? You can actually change the volume very easily applying pressure. That means that that term is going to be very, very large for a gas and negligible for solids and liquids most of the time. For all of our applications, we are actually going to take the approximation to say that that term is only important for the gases and we're going to ignore that value for the solids and the liquids. In this particular chemical reaction that we have right here, notice that the only gas that we have is that one. Okay, so that, that's actually, that term is only going to be related to that uh, 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 mole of gas that you have right there. Okay, great. So uh, then the idea is to uh, use that notion that this term only applies for gases to make, th to make this expression a little bit more palatable more e or easier to handle. Okay, if, uh, uh, well, so this is actually very easy to handle because this, if this only applies to a gas, right, so that only happens to a gas, then we can invoke the ideal gas approximation, the ideal gas equation of state, to simply make it minus delta nRT for the gas. Okay? So, so that actually now this is very easy to handle because this is just the number of moles of gas or the change in the number of moles of gas are, and then the change in temperature for that gas. Okay? Now, in this particular case, we're running the reaction isothermally. That means that the temperature does not change, right? If the temperature doesn't change, then you can actually factor it out of that uh, increment, and this turns into the following. Delta H minus uh, RT delta N, where again we're factoring out uh, this constant uh, variable, or this constant R, and then the constant temperature out of this change, and then you just have that that is the delta N of the gas. Okay, change of moles in gas. And we actually have everything that we need here. Uh, right, so let's try to see if we can plug in those numbers. That is going to be delta H, which we know is minus 367.5 kilojoules. Then here we have R, T, and delta N of gas. R, uh, notice that here we have kilojoules, right? So to, to use the same units, we're going to divide our R number, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, over 1,000 to get R in kilojoules per mole Kelvin so that the units match with what we have right here. Okay, so that is going to be 0 0.008314 kilojoules per mole for Kelvin. Then we have the temperature, which is provided by the statement, 298.2 Kelvin. And then we have delta N of the gas, right? So this delta N of the gas, right, this is the number of moles of gas in products, or final, minus the number of moles of gas uh, initially, or in reagents. Okay, so we come to this reaction, and we say, well, how many moles of gas we have in products? Well, we only have one mole of gas in products, right? That's not a gas. And in reagents, we have zero moles there, zero moles. So this number is actually one minus zero in units of mole, okay? So that is simply 1.00 mole. Okay, notice that we actually start in this reaction with two moles of uh, uh, sodium. Right, so that means that the amount of moles that you have in products would be one mole of that product gas. Great, so we can now uh, cancel this mole unit. The Kelvin units also uh, cancels, and then the only thing that is left, uh, left over is my kilojoules uh, energy unit, right? So this delta U, when you do that, is going to be minus 370.0 kilojoules. And that is your answer. All right, so then let's compare what is the difference between delta H and delta U. Okay, so uh, delta H is minus 367.5, 
delta U is minus 370 kilojoules. Okay, so that's a difference of just 1%, uh, which is fairly typical. Okay, so, so here's kind of the punchline of all these. Delta U, delta H, internal energy enthalpy are very, very, very similar. However, enthalpy is easier to handle. Notice that in this problem, actually, we did not have to do anything at all to obtain the value of delta H. We simply measure the amount of energy released as heat, and they're open to the atmosphere, and that is directly delta H, the change in enthalpy. This is why we prefer to use delta H. It's just easier to get. Right? For delta U, uh, we've had to do some manipulations in order to obtain it, and in the end, what we actually find out is that they're very similar. Right? They're only different by 1%. So again, that, that just tells you that uh, uh, we prefer to use enthalpy because it's just easier to get, and it conveyed, co conveys more or less or very similar information to uh, the value of internal enthalpy. Okay, so to wrap up this video, uh, you have had here now a chance to begin to understand the differences between internal energy and enthalpy uh, by looking at uh, general chemical reaction.